Thank you, James. Uh, thank you, Alex, for having me today. Uh, yeah, I'm a postdoc at UCR. I work at uh, Jimmy Yang Labs until his retirement last year, and now JV is uh, my uh, supervisor. I will talk. I will be talking about a uh, plant hormone oxygen and how it moves towards the distal part of the cotyledon and how that uh, regulates the expansion in the early time points of the cotyledon. So let me introduce you to this hormone, oxygen. This is a simple molecule that it's involved in many aspects of uh, plant development in the flower, in the shoot, in the root, uh, uh, you name it. And in uh, the young lab, we've been interested in the epidermal cells of the shoot because they have this beautiful uh, puzzle piece shape, uh, an outgrowth that is called lobes. And those lobes is dependent on the concentration of oxygen. The oxygen is uh, perceived, is sensed at the cell surface, and it transduces a cascade to the raw GTPases. And that has been the main focus of the Young Lab for, for 20 years. That's, it is known the non canonical oxygen signaling. The canonical signaling is a regulation of gene transcription and is known in very in, in much detail. And it gave us one of the most uh, used um, oxygen transcriptional reporters that follows the enzyme activity of GUS. I'm interested in these rapid uh, changes of shape between the half a millimeter embryo inside the seed to half a centimeter seedling in about two hours. Actually, inside the seed, if you remove one of the cotyledons and you see the ataxial cell, um, side of the cotyledon, the cells in there are have a smooth surface. And in about those two days, those cells uh, intercalate and intergitate one another, forming this beautiful pattern. And that pattern is highly dependent or coordinated by an accumulation of this hormone at the tip of the cotyledon. So we were wondering, how is this oxygen at the tip of the cotyledon formed? And we immediately thought about um, the cell-to-cell -cell oxygen transport that's uh, very important for plant development. And it's based on the polar localization of uh, uh, pin family members that move oxygen to a place of synthesis to a place of signaling um, uh, in the most simplistic way of viewing this model. Um, among different pin family members, pin two is the one that is the most app regulated in these early time, point, time points. And besides its expression in the root, where it has a very well known role uh, driving gravity tropism of the root, the only other place in the plant that is expressed in this is in these early uh, time points. And maybe more importantly, the oxygen accumulation of uh, at the tip of the cotyledon is highly diminished in the P2 mutant. So we were wondering where it is expressed. In, in this cotyledon in order to function uh, as a transporter of oxygen towards the tip of the cotyledon. And we identified in the border of the cotyledon in, in cuboidal cells that are called marginal cells, in this polar fashion towards the tip of the cotyledon, specifically in the ataxial uh, side of the marginal cells, and it forms this tunnel towards the tip is um, specific to the margin cells in both sides of the cotyledon, specific because what the signal you see on the tip is uh, out of fluorescence that we remove with a sp spectral imaging. To try to identify the phenotype uh, in the intergestation of this mutant, we identify different zones of the cotyledon along the proximal distal axis and then we use a shape descriptor. There's a ratio between area and perimeter in the wild type and in the pin mutants to discover that specifically at the tip, there's a lower level of interdigitation, which is consistent with a lower level of oxygen in that area. And then because some of the samples were showing strong pin two presence and others were not, we uh, assumed that there was a spatial uh, temporal regulation of its expression. And we try to correlate the interdigitation by using this circularity descriptor with the pin levels at the margin cells. 
And we discovered that pain levels are transient. They have a peak of expression about 48 hours and an onset rapidly between 24 and 36 hours after you put the seed in growing conditions. And then between 60 and 72 hours, the pain disappears. So the system is transient, but we wanted to understand how. Um, to put in other words, what are the initiating and the terminating signals for this pinto-based oxygen transport system? Uh, because of the um, self-organizing nature of oxygen, we thought oxygen was the initiating signal, and we try to analyze different oxygen synthesis pathways. The expression of the main two pathways, the genes involved in the main two pathways, um, shows a clear preference to the IBA to IA conversion in these developmental stages. And the rate limiting enzyme of this IBA to IA conversion that's called ECH2 is present in those marginal cells uh, identified by, by spectral imaging in the presence of PIN2 and before the PIN2 is expressed as shown here in A at 24 hours after plating the embryo. So that suggested that IBA is converted to IA by this enzyme, and then IA promotes the expression of this transporter. And uh, the, ex the, expression, the expression of PIN2 uh, correlates with a certain level of interdigitation that is quantifiable by this uh, circularity descriptor. And in the absence of this conversion of IBA to IA, by this uh, double loss of function mutant, PIN2 levels uh, decrease uh, dramatically as shown in this intensity graph. And consistently with that, uh, the levels of interdigitation of those epidermal cells. So within that, the initiating signal is IBA derived oxygen, but then we wanted to know what is the terminated, terminating signal. And then at a conference, uh, one of our collaborators uh, showed us a specific expression of a transporter of IBA that's localized in the tonoplast, in the membrane of the plant lysosomes. And we thought maybe IBA has been sequestered into these lysosomes or vacuoles in plants. And that would decrease, uh, that would uh, produce a decrease in the PIN2 levels. And that's consistent with the localization because when PIN2 is being decreased, it's at the tonoplast. When it's at its peak, it's reticular expression. So this hypothesis might, might be correct. And then we, so that to corroborate that, we try to analyze the sp spatial temporal dynamics of top one and PIN2. And with that, we discovered that as PIN2 is being removed, out of the margins of the cotyledon, if you follow the white arrowheads, top one expression uh, starts appearing from tip to base of the cotyledon in a complementary fashion. And if top one functions to decrease spin two, then it makes sense that the loss of function of two alleles of top one uh, produce an increase of the pin two levels. And with that, an increase of the oxygen accumulated at the tip of those cotyledons. So we think that the terminating signal indeed is uh, the internalization of IBA mediated by this uh, transporter top one localized at the vacuoles, at the membrane of the vacuoles, the tonoblast. And then to further understand the expression of top one, we analyzed the promoter of that gene and we detected um, oxygen response elements uh, to oxygen, uh, oxygen response elements. Um, and with that, uh, we um, discover that adding exogenous, uh, low concentration of exogenous oxygen, we can increase uh, the level of top one. And with that, we circle back the self-organizing uh, circuit of this system. So with that evidence, we propose that uh, uh, there, uh, our working model that, uh, for this self-organizing transient oxygen flow at the margin cells. At the beginning, we uh, envision a positive feedback where oxygen stimulates uh, PIN2 expression and with that, its own uh, transport in these uh, cells. 
And later on, that higher level of oxygen uh, stimulate top one expression to sequester the precursor, IBA, the precursor of uh, oxygen, and with that causing the determination or the decrease of the PIN2 levels. At tissue level, it's interesting to see how the oxygen, the red color here, it's uh, increased at, towards the tip of the catalytic as a consequence of PIN2. Uh, function. And that increased oxygen levels uh, turn on top one to decrease the PIN2, uh, which it's easy to visualize the self-organizing nature um, of the system. So with that, I wanted to acknowledge the people uh, participating in this work, uh, the entire young uh, family, Jamie, who is supervising me now, and our collaborators, Lucia and Kenny Shiro, and the funding. Uh, of course, with that, I'm open to the questions if you have any. Great. Thank you very much, Patricia. That was fantastic. And as Patricia says, we've got time for uh, some questions. So if you have questions, please type them into the Q&A box, which should be um, at the bottom of your screen. I can see that... Um, uh, Alex has a question for you. So he is asking, um, it looks like PIN2 is localized at the cell membrane to give directional flow of oxygen. Do you know what establishes the axis? Um, we, we don't know at the moment. We're trying to understand that. And we think it's, again, uh, um, it, it's a self-organization uh, of um, oxygen and where the oxygen is moving into the next cell. Uh, but do you know what sort of initiates, in, sort of breaks the initial symmetry to, to start that self-organization? Yeah, we don't know exactly. We have some, some ideas that might be um, related with the mechanical pressure that some of the cells are uh, experiencing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that would be the could be the initial thing. Yeah, interesting. Um, so another question for you: Do you think other pin proteins are contributing to this process as well, since you don't see a complete loss of oxygen at the tip in the pin two mutant? Yeah, it 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 could be. Uh, but at the other pin members that are um, that are um, moving oxygen directionally they are not moving it towards the team. So I, I guess that uh, the still present oxygen in the loss of function might be local synthesis of oxygen at that site. So that accumulation might have two sources, local synthesis and then reinforce in the border by the borders. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dominica Chow is asking, earlier in your presentation, you briefly described that oxygen transport follows a source sync model. Does this proposed self-organizing model also fit that too? Uh, um, not exactly, because the source would be each one of those cells that are doing both uh, synthesizing and moving the oxygen towards the sink. So that's a very simplistic view of the model that I try to show to, to have a, a reference. How quickly, do, well, how stable is, is oxygen? I was wondering, I was thinking about the dynamics of PIN2 expression you were showing. I'm wondering how quickly the changes in PIN2 result in, in changes in oxygen distribution. Uh, yeah, quite rapidly. We're trying to... Um, image that with the uh, oxygen reporters that are faster than the transcriptional output. So there are other reporters that you can measure. And we think it's about uh, less than an hour where you can see changes in, in pin expression, changes in the next cell's oxygen content. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, thank you very much, Patricia. I'm afraid we have to, to move on. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.